Hello everybody, I'm the Turtle Melon, and welcome to an Undermine 1.0 official release beginner's guide. In this guide, I'll be going through many aspects of the early game of Undermine, such as the tutorial, some of the NPCs you'll find along the way and how to unlock them in the early game, uh, some of the upgrade systems that are available, some general tips uh, such as things like blessings and curses, and covering some of the secrets and how to find them. Hopefully this will give you a good start into how to get some of the early game things unlocked without too much trouble, some of the things that's going to be necessary to making progress into the late game. Uh, I do have to say that some of the NPCs are found on the second floor of the game. I won't be showing the second floor boss, but I will be showing you how to beat the first floor in its entirety along with the boss um, and yes some gameplay of the second floor as that's where you'll be finding at least one or two of the NPCs that's available. The first thing we're going to get into is we're going to get into the tutorial of the game as there is a one little thing specifically that you can do to get yourself an early achievement that not that many people have got surprisingly. After getting the key off of the Archmage, you can jump down into your very first run of Undermine, and this will automatically place you into the tutorial. There will be a bunch of signs around that you can read in order to learn how to use certain buttons, such as jumping, swinging and killing things, and then you'll be shown how to use bombs and keys. Uh, but in this room that has the first bomb that you'll see, you actually get one bomb to blow up the rock and gain the key to get access to the next room. But you actually get a second bomb. And if you take that second bomb and navigate back to the very first room that you spawned in, so you go left and then straight up, two rooms you'll enter the room you spawned in and you can place a bomb down at the top wall to find your very first secret room and unlocking this actually gives you an achievement that not many people have as well as giving you some of the meta currency thorium which can be used to buy items and unlock them for later runs it's a very very useful little tip there to start yourself off very very nicely Just before we get into the NPCs, I want to do a quick note about the little green guys called Pilfers, the guys that are going to come around and steal your gold. Many people may find these annoying or difficult to deal with, but honestly, these guys are really not that big of a problem. They will steal a few nuggets of gold here and there, but a swing or a throw normally deals with them, and even if they steal one nugget, it's not going to be that big of an issue. Just don't let them bother you, don't let them get to you, and just accept that every now and again, you'll lose a little bit of gold. It's fine, do not worry about it, there is plenty more where that came from. After finishing the dedicated tutorial floor, you'll start your first real floor where you'll eventually find an exclamation mark room that is barred by some rocks. Blow up the rocks and enter the room and here you will find Wayland the blacksmith. Give him a chat, go up to him and talk to him and he'll be very grateful for you blasting him out of this room and he will eventually exit and make his way back up to the hub. In the room he also suggests that you buy the pickaxe upgrade that costs 75 gold to your right. By now you should have more than enough to purchase this so go ahead and get that and that this will be your first upgrade and this is a meta upgrade that persists through all runs as do all of the upgrades from the blacksmith and he also has a chest that contains your first blueprint after dying on this run you'll be brought back to the hub and you will see wayland entering his blacksmith's forge follow wayland into the forge and you will see on his tables he has set up many different upgrades starting with increased hp and then increased swing damage increased throw damage your gold integrity basically how much gold you lose when you die and the counterweight which is going to increase throw distance i highly recommend getting the gold sack so that you lose less gold on death first getting a few upgrades of that is really going to help out and then swing damage and HP next. Swing damage I definitely think is better than throw damage in all ways so I definitely recommend getting good with swing damage and health is a primary resource for survivability and a lot of other things within the undermine so I highly recommend you go for that. These upgrades are going to be your primary way of upgrading yourself and accessing the later game content and also where the vast majority of your gold is going to be going into. You can also talk to Wayland in order to craft a blueprints that you have found for Thorium Currency, the purple gems you've been finding, and these crafted items will then be able to show up in the Undermine from here on out, and the cool thing is, the first one you craft will also be brought into your next run with you, although do be careful because this can only be done once per run, so I suggest picking one good item to craft per run. Some other really important upgrades can also be found in the Archmage's room, such as the glasses to show enemy HP, and the gecko's foot and other foot to pick up gold with thrown pickaxes, and also pick up items with thrown pickaxes. 
Next, you'll come across Dodson locked in a cage that requires a special key. And we'll go into the specifics of how to get that key. But first, I just want to show what happens when you unlock him and what upgrades he unlocks. When he goes back to the hub, he will offer to sell you bomb damage upgrades, which I highly recommend not buying. It's not worth it. And the Echo Blast upgrade, which allows you to break special walls and you'll need to unlock a feature later. In order to get that special key, you're going to have to learn the combat mechanics of this game. Now, in my opinion, there are a few different ways to play this game in terms of combat, especially considering both throw and swing damage are viable. But in my opinion, swing damage is far more viable and should be your primary method. Even though it feels like it's not as safe, it results in higher damage. And honestly, the better you get with it, you'll more, the more you'll realize that throw damage is all but obsolete eventually. And one of the best tactics with swing damage is the swing jump tactic. You'll see me performing this here and there within the video that's playing behind. Basically, I will swing at an enemy and jump immediately. But then, once you've learned that and gone to the room below Dodson, to get the key, you will have to fight the rock pile mimic. This is a boss that mimics a rock pile. And basically, he has a few different attacks, one of which he has little stalagmites fall from the ceiling. Another one, he rolls around. And the third one, he does this slammer attack where a big sort of explosion comes out from him and again the swing jump swing jump tactic is very important here get a hit on him then jump then get a hit on him then jump then get a hit on him then jump this is going to be a primary method and you may even see that sometimes it looks like he's just about to hit me with a roll but a jump gets me perfectly out of the way and saves from taking any damage this can be applied to many many different parts of the game and many different enemies and once you've killed the rock pile mimic you will have the key to unlock dodson it's going to be obviously very useful for getting another NPC unlocked, as well as giving you some nice amount of thorium and some extra blueprints to unlock items for further runs. But this combat tactic is going to be used in a lot of different ways. Here's some gameplay from some of the harder enemies on the next floor, these rats here. I'm doing swing, 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 jump. So basically, you'll see that when enemies are about to attack, they light up red. They have a little red outline around them. This means they are going to attack you. Use that to choreograph when you need to jump. As soon as you see them flash red, jump out the way. And this works for many different enemies, even these bats here. And as you saw, that red little witch guy is a big problem, but you can just run up to him, keep jumping out of the explosions and swinging. And this tactic is tried and true. It's going to work all the way through the game. And another tip here, this enemy that you see me fighting, this little knight, does take massively reduced throw damage so you want to be swinging at him 100% of the time and again as you can see employing the swing and jump and then thirdly I just want to show off that you can use in the environment to hurt your enemies as you can see we've got these thunder bugs here and I use the little fire in the middle in order to um, hit the enemy which is a very very useful thing to do and now we'll go on to sell the first boss and explain how to beat this first boss. He may look intimidating the first time you fight him, but honestly, Celt's a cutie. He's quite easy to pummel into the ground and basically... The tactic is, follow his tail as tightly as you can. If he gets anywhere near you, jump and destroy the little eggs that he throws on the floor as quickly as possible. If he manage to hatch, make sure to get rid of the little lava. And as he keeps going, keep chasing the tail and swinging it, chasing the tail and swinging it, and then he'll start to do a circular move. Just jump over the little rocks that he's flinging at you and you'll be okay and as he comes to turn around a tip here is if you plant a bomb in front of him he will absolutely actually capture the bomb in his mandibles and this will stun him and deal a lot of damage allowing you to get even more hits on him than normal and this is probably the best way to, to beat Celt it becomes a very easy fight if you use this bomb tactic because you get a good amount of damage and a stun on him giving you much more time to swing at him uh, and yeah as long as you've got maybe two or three bombs you can do this a good few times throughout the fight and it makes the fight much much shorter but even if you don't, as long as you stay close enough to swing at the tail without so close that he'll hit you, then you should be okay here. And as you can see, that's exactly what I'm doing. Swinging at the tail to make sure we're getting enough damage off and jumping out of the way of any attacks. If he does manage to go underground, he'll do this little rock formation around you. It literally means nothing. Just jump out of the rock formation and move away. And he'll most likely, as he comes up out of the ground, move right. So you want to prepare for the fact that he'll most likely move right if he has the room to. Um, but again, just keep swinging at the tail. Keep following close, jumping out the way of attacks, and you should be absolutely fine. Celt shouldn't be too difficult of a boss for you, and you shouldn't have too hard of a time. And yet again, after this, you will get your first boss token, so to say. 
the um, artifact and you'll also get a lot of money, Thorium. You'll get the key to the next floor and you'll get yourself the Celts Blood um, blueprint there as well. So then you can head up to the next floor and head down into the second floor after going past these guards here. And this is where you'll find some of the new NPCs that we're going to have a look into. Do note that the bosses will not respawn for future runs until you have beaten a full run and killed every boss on every floor. It is highly recommended that you make your way to a shop and speak to the shopkeeper Pilfer. She will offer you the loyalty program for 1,200 gold and this will actually send an NPC Pilfer back to the hub area that will sell different shop upgrades that will mean that the shops within runs have more stock. The next NPC you'll find is Dibble on the Dungeons 1 in the second floor. And he will actually be in an exclamation mark room that is guarded by a two key locked gate. Open that gate once you've got enough keys and speak to Dibble and then he will appear in the hub from then on. You can also buy his items and do be aware there's a secret in this room. So maybe try bombing a few of those walls. But once you get back to the hub, you will find Dibble to the left of the Undermine entrance. And he will actually sell you items that you can take into your next run. So if you ever have a spare bit of gold and you see a key or a bomb lying around that you maybe think you'll need in your next run you can buy those and take those down with you Lilith's unlock method is a little more involved. You're going to have to perform multiple steps across multiple floors. On Dungeons 1, you're going to find an X marked rock that is a slightly different colour that will reveal a staircase underneath it and make an audible noise. Once you jump down into that staircase, you will be in a room with a skeleton. You can go up to the skeleton and sometimes get items from them. They appear throughout the dungeon, but you're going to make your way up along a path of a few rooms and at the end of this room, you will find a locked cell with Lilith inside against a post guarded by the two people that were guarding the floor that you are currently on after beating cell unfortunately you do not have the key required to unlock that so go to the next floor and find a skull marked room on the mini map open that with one key and you'll be presented with the key on the altar but there are four gargoyles surrounding it once you approach the key all these gargoyles will come to life you cannot attack them beforehand either and they are very deadly please try to enter this room with some bombs as they do help in killing these gargoyles once you walk up to the key a wall will come up around the key and all four gargoyles will come to life at once now this is a very tough fight be careful make sure to swing and jump swing and jump constantly as i've been saying they will do an attack in um up and left and right and down positions no matter where you are basically depending on where you're facing and where the guy goes facing when they go down into that stone formation after reaching about half health they do a slam which will hurt you at close range and can be bombed if you bomb them while in this stone form they will take vastly increased damage this is why i advise bringing in some bombs so try to hurt them until they get down to half hp and as soon as they go into stern form drop a bomb on them this should kill them or leave them very very weak just make sure that no matter where you are, you're constantly jumping out the way and you're not staying on the horizontal or vertical axis is too long. These gargoyles cannot, sh cannot shoot diagonally, so you are safe in these positions. But when there's four of them, that's not always an option. So just make sure to keep jumping around them and bomb them when need be. So try to bring at least four bombs with you. This will make this fight much, much easier. And after they are all dead, you finally have the key that you require and you can make your way down to the next floor. On the next floor, floor you will find yourself coming across the same x on the rock yet again as you can see in this room here it's just to the right of the exit to the next floor this is on dungeons 3 uh, once you find this rock yet again go up to it and bomb the rock once more again like i said make sure you have plenty of bombs to do this you're going to need a few bombs throughout this process but once you bomb into that it will reveal another staircase as you saw before exactly the same layout as the last one but this time you have the key so head down there make your way up above travel straight forward remember to check the skeleton again always check skeletons always check skeletons uh, but make your way all the way up and you're going to find that same room again guarded by the same two people but this time like i said you have the key you can go up to the door unlock it 
and then once you speak to Lilith, she will be teleported back to the hub and appear as an NPC in the hub. Now, let me tell you, Lilith is probably one of the most important NPCs you'll unlock in this game, considering she basically activates a whole new feature in this game in having shrines that now spawn, and from these you can get blessings and curses. And from now on, blessings and curses become a much bigger part of this game, and this is really where the game gets incredible for me. Blessings and curses are part of my most enjoyable thing for this game, like the thing I enjoy most most about it so getting this NPC unlocked is very high priority also once she's back in the hub she does have some upgrades available you'll be sent into the Archmage's room once again and she will speak to you where the glasses are that we bought earlier, currently on screen you can see the glasses there, but we bought them earlier, you should see a candle available. This candle is an upgrade that's going to increase the amount of blessings that are available at the uh, shrines I spoke of, and the sensor that's 4,000 just to the left of her is going to give you one blessing at the start of every run, and then two blessings and three blessings as you upgrade it more and more. And Lilith can be used to basically use um, these recipes that you see on the floor now, these terms, and these can be used at her to unlock new blessings for Thorium, as they can with the blacksmith. Uh, so she is a very, very good NPC to have unlocked as early as possible. And then we'll get into some more with the shrines and curses and blessings as we get further into this video. But yes, I really like Lilith and she activates a really unique feature in this game, which I think is brilliant. Next up, we have a random event NPC that can be found randomly throughout the Undermine, but the first time you come across her, it'll be in this exact room, she'll say these exact things, and basically, she's going to sell you a blueprint for a really, really, really low cost and act like she's completely ripped you off and she's scammed you out of it, and she's going to kind of be someone that you gamble with throughout this run when you find her. She has a few different room variants, and some of them include little mini games such as a pick a chest mini game, and other ones just allow you to trade different items for other items. But another good tip as well is this room here does have a lot of gold in it in all the pots. She'll say it's a shakedown and she's going to be annoyed there's pilfers everywhere. But it is a nice little bit of extra gold. But yes, as I said, she does have one very important room that allows you to trade certain things for other things. Such as health for potions or keys for food, things like that. You'll see that room in just a moment here. But this room is important for another reason. You can actually go up to Black Rabbit and talk to her and sell her your relics for money, which is a really good idea if you have bad relics to get a lot and a lot of money early on. So I highly recommend doing this sometimes. So remember that Echo Blast bomb upgrade that's available from Dodson? This is what allows you to blow up the blue sort of green crystally walls. And they're going to give you access to a few different things. But the main one is at the start of floors, you're going to have access to an NPC called Hoodie. And he is going to allow you to fast travel between floors. Which may not be the most appealing thing in the world to some people. Because most people like to do a full run. But it's nice to have it available. But the bigger feature in my opinion that this unlocks is the boots that are below. I think they're called the Explorer's Boots. Basically these allow you to have faster movement speed outside of combat and this enhances the experience of this game vastly in my opinion so make sure to prioritize buying these as soon as you can it is also worth knowing that in 1.0 hoodie now gives you three relics per zone that you skip so if you want to try out those future zones or just practice them a little more then you can skip ahead to them without being at too much of a disadvantage The last NPC that we're going to have to unlock is Baba the Alchemist, and this is done through the Mushroom quest line. First of all, on one run, you're going to find a guy, a weird dude named Beltram, and he's going to talk to you about some mushrooms, and that's going to be it. That's the only thing that happens. And then in a future run, you're going to come across another weird room that has a sign that says the mushrooms grow in darkness. So in this room, you're going to want to destroy all of the lanterns in the room and make the room completely dark, and the first mushroom will spawn. I believe it's called the Nightshade Mushroom mushroom the next one that you'll find in another run um is basically a big mushroom guy surrounded by rats that are attacking all the mushrooms you want to kill all the rats and then speak to the big mushroom guy and he will give you the second mushroom now do please note that all of these occur on different runs so they can't you can't find each mushroom on the same run and the last mushroom you're going to find a random room that's got an exploded patch around a small bit of mushrooms plant a bomb in the middle of there and you will get the last mushroom and then the next run you go into you will find beltram again Speak to him, 
tell him that you've collected all of the mushrooms and he will say that Baba will be pleased and he will head back up to the surface. At the end of this run, you will find Baba jumping out of the undermine, knocking on Baba's door, which will be the door you haven't been able to access yet that has the little potion sign. And eventually he will enter through this. Now this is an NPC that's gonna be very, very valuable to unlock as she has a few key upgrades available and allows you to craft new potions as you can with recipes and blueprints with whales. You can do the same here with Baba and brewing new potions as you find the recipes along the way. So two of the things you can see in this room below you can see two upgrades the first one for 2000 is potion slot upgrades which i highly recommend you get at least one of as early as possible as potion slots are very important being able to hold two potions for later is very very useful as it means you can hold them for bosses or you can hold healing potions when you need them later and we also have the second thing here which is going to increase the duration of potions effects which works on a few different potions such as ones like troll sweat which heal you over time and then like i said we can get recipes here go up to baba click on brew and there you go for um for the currency we can get ourselves a potion and this works like wayland where we can carry one potion into our next run so do keep that in mind when crafting potions just a few quick tips about the shop. For one, it's always worth using a key on the shop because you could get another one back, especially when it's upgraded. Secondly, another tip, you can use the popcorn kernel potions in order to steal from the shop and duplicate what's already in there. And then thirdly, I suggest never buying relics from the shop until you have a lot and a lot of money. Secret rooms are a great way to get extra resources in Undermine, and they can be found in a few different ways. The most obvious one is by planting a bomb next to a wall that can be blown up, but something people might not know is when you have any explosive, not even a bomb placed by you, it could be an enemy that explodes in a room, any wall that is a potential secret room will glow and light up and have this sparkle to it. As you can see that just happened there, I got that bomb pilfer, and now this wall has sort of a glowy sparkly effect right next to where it needs to be bombed. Bomb in there, and that will open up the secret room wall. Now do be careful because if you've got conjoining secret rooms, you may end up see, uh, seeing a situation where it will highlight a room, that, a secret room that you've already been into and you don't want to waste an extra bomb on that, so look out for that. You can also use enemies in order to open up secret room walls for you. So anything that explodes or enemies that do sort of a striking effect such as this worm here, you can actually see that TNT barrel highlighted this wall above us. If we stand next to this wall and let these enemies attack us at the right, angle it will actually go ahead and destroy a bunch of different things for us and we also actually get a little look at the mimic enemy here so do be aware that mimics do exist in this game they can be there and you can also use these enemies to destroy rocks as you saw as well which could sometimes yield resources and then one extra tip lots of tips in this little clip here the antimatter potion specifically can be used to turn damage into healing but you can actually use that to bomb yourself so say you have an antimatter potion if you pop the potion which gives you the antimatter effect so the next instant of damage will heal and then bomb yourself it will deal high damage to you and give you a high amount of healing as you can see here i got 72 healing very valuable but yeah that's a really good way to get in secret rooms also another way that they can be revealed is by the minefield rooms some rooms have minefields in them as you can see here the sparkle on the wall above reveals that there is a secret room available so that just shows the few different types of explosives that can highlight a secret room for you and that's going to be a really good piece of information to know here, I just want to go over some general tips. First of all, always destroy all destructibles like boxes and barrels because they can reward you with consumables. As you can see, I got a key and a bomb. And then from this one here, I got a key. Secondly, these bigger chests that you can find on the second floor and onwards in the early game are always worth it. They give you an insane amount of gold, quite a big heal in the little ham hock you get. And you also normally get a blessing as well, usually quite worth it. Thirdly, some of these chests and potions that are beyond spikes, you can actually reach without going over the spike or sometimes you can even melee swing the potion out of its position on the spikes which is very useful. Thirdly some tips about Burbo here. Make sure to use Burbo to destroy um, secret room walls as well as rocks to find secret rooms in the floor like this staircase one we have here. These can be found in multiple different ways but Burbo is just one of them and he is a very good resource to use so don't just think that he's an annoyance. And secondly if he's bothering you just throw him in a pit. He, he's stupid he'll just run straight in there. And lastly with Burbo look he does destroy quite a lot of rocks 
box and he did give us a consumable but be aware if he runs over a consumable he can destroy it thirdly we have this room here i just want to show this off because some people don't know about these thorium statues they're pretty rare and they don't appear that often but make sure to look out for them when you can because they are going to be an extra way to get a little bit more thorium which is going to allow you to craft those blueprints that you're going to want to be getting so make sure to keep an open eye for those statues when you can they're very very useful to find uh, this room here, I just want to show off the Hoarding Pilfer. These are a very rare find, but if you manage to hit them enough times, you can see the amount of hits it takes to kill them on the bottom right. They will reward you with a lot of gold, a lot of thorium, and most likely a blessing as well. Very, very nice to find those, so try to be looking out for them. They'll make a little tune, a little noise when they're in the room. You can also see that there's three statues in this room. One of them lit up, and each with spikes below it. If you step on the spikes, it lights up the statues and gives you a chest. That's one of the ways that I talked about about spending health. And this here is another way you can spend HP. You can spend HP on some of these mini games here. You pull the lever, it spends HP. The amount you spend each time goes up with each consecutive pull. Um, and it's kind of a gamble. Sometimes you get good things, sometimes you don't. As you see here, I got three skulls in a row, but the first time I did get a chest. So it's worth using these and realizing that if you have enough health or you have healing around, they are pretty good and pretty useful. Blessings and curses are a huge part of Undermine, and once you unlock Lilith, you'll start to find these shrines around, and from these, you can pick to gain blessings, but you will gain a random curse, so do be careful. But you can also use these same shrines to penance, which is going to cost HP, and remove a curse, although I kind of advise against this, because there is better ways to remove curses in things like potions. You can also find chests around that will give you a lot of rewards for a curse. Do be aware, though, these will give bigger and worse curses, as, as well as the purple fires that you'll find around the place both of these will give major curses which affect you much worse such as this fire here so be careful about these and if you haven't unlocked lilith yet i highly highly recommend you never open a chest or blow up those fires Lastly, just a small tip about this altar that you may come across during runs. If you put an item on this altar, it will take the item off you and take it out of the loot pool so you never find it again. But if you find this altar again on a subsequent run, that same item will be there and you can trade the item with one in your possession. And basically this means that you can save items for future runs and you can also remove bad items from the loot pool.